When I'm researching these videos, it's difficult to figure out what the theme is going to be. What's the link between different fairy tales? Or how is a folktale connected to the geography of a place? But sometimes, you find two different waterfalls named for murdered senior citizens, and you don't have to do any of that. So I'd like to give thanks to the town of Arida for this one. Which, by the way, also has waterfalls which are unconnected to homicide. The first of the two cataracts named Ubagataki, or Old Woman Falls, is high in the mountains overlooking the Arida River Valley. This folktale has to do with the steep taxes levied on peasants during the Edo period, and what farmers did to survive. One year, a tax collector came through the village to assess the value of its crops. At this time, there was an old woman who lived at the foot of the waterfall, farming a small plot of land. The inspector looked around, then asked, You don't have any rice paddies up past that waterfall, do you? What a foolish question, snapped the old woman. Can't grow nothing up there. The inspector knew better than to mess with an octogenarian, so he left well enough alone. Several years later, however, he paid a second visit to the old woman's home. As he rested on the rocks beside the waterfall, he witnessed a single stalk of rice tumble over the falls. Sure enough, north of the waterfall were several untaxed rice paddies. This is a crime, a capital crime, said the inspector. Are these fields yours? They are, replied the old woman, and she was arrested and beheaded for tax evasion. But, as you may have already guessed, the rice paddies did not belong to the woman alone. They were for the whole village, so that they had enough to eat before giving a percentage of their harvest to the daimyo. So the farmers constructed this shrine to the woman who had given her life for the village. After paying my respects at the first Ubagataki, I drove back down into the valley to search for the second, but it doesn't exist anymore. I asked an old woman living nearby about it, and she said that the dam to the east and construction on the banks has changed the flow of the river enough that there's no longer a waterfall. She also gave me some mandarin oranges and a cabbage, because of course she did. So instead of Ubagataki, here's some footage of a picturesque spot nearby. The late Old Woman Falls was named after a homeless woman who lived on the banks of the river. She would make small tchotchkes out of string and trade them with the villagers for food. She was annoying and no one in the village liked her, but that's not to say they wanted to see her die. So they were shocked and appalled when a young man shot her down in cold blood. She tumbled into the river and even after her body was retrieved, the pool was stained crimson. The villagers began to leave regular offerings of food on the banks, and eventually the stain faded. The tradition remained up until about a generation ago. I'm constantly impressed by the resilience of folktales. Most likely, neither of these events ever happened. There are just too many similar tales of tax collectors and the unjustly killed to be true. And yet they are still being told. One of the tales even outlasted the waterfall named after it. Anyway, tune in next week for seven stories about carpenters named Haruto who fought serpents on top of mountains. The serpents are also named Haruto.